Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description below for a free one month trial of Skillshare Premium. Hey everyone, Path here. Now, the quantum property known as spin, this property that electrons and other particles can have, is a really interesting topic that's been covered many times in many brilliant videos here on YouTube. I also have a couple of different videos on this channel discussing various aspects of spin, and we'll be looking at some of the basics in this video as well. But a really interesting question that we can ask is, what effect does spin have in a real world context? For example, if an electron which has spin is found within an atom, does the spin of this electron have any impact on the atom? The answer, as you might expect, is yes. In this video, we'll be looking at something known as spin-orbit coupling. And we'll also be looking at how this affects the energy levels in which electrons can be found within an atom. As always, we'll be trying to keep the mathematics as simple as possible, so if you enjoy this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. We'll start by recapping a couple of important ideas. Firstly, at the center of an atom, we'll find a region known as the nucleus. This nucleus contains protons and neutrons, while electrons are found in very specific energy levels surrounding the nucleus. Now, when electrons are found in these energy levels, we'll call them shells for now, and we'll see the difference in a moment, but when these electrons are in these shells, they have what's known as angular momentum. Every object that is spinning or rotating or moving along a curved path has some amount of angular momentum. Angular momentum is similar to linear momentum, which is what we normally just call momentum, except linear momentum has to do with motion in a straight line, whereas angular momentum has more to do with motion along a curved path of some sort. So electrons in these shells have some angular momentum. The really interesting thing with electrons though, is that even if we take them out of the atom, even if we're now just looking at an electron sitting there by itself with nothing else surrounding it, it still has some amount of angular momentum. Even if this electron is not spinning or traveling along a curved path or doing any of the things that we normally expect in order for an object to have angular momentum, the electron has angular momentum. It behaves like it has angular momentum. Now, this extra little amount of angular momentum that these electrons have, regardless of where they're found, is known as spin. The origins of spin are quite tricky to talk about and to some extent are still being debated to this day. After all, how does an object that's not spinning at all and not traveling along a curved path or anything like that, how does it have angular momentum? Now, everything I've just mentioned has been already covered on my channel in various different videos. So if you're unfamiliar with any of it, then please do check them out. I'll leave some links in the description below. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find a large number of inspiring classes focusing on topics such as productivity and lifestyle, to building a business, to learning creative skills. Many of you may know that one of my hobbies is creating music. Check out my music channel linked below. And I've taken some classes on Skillshare that have taught me some really cool skills. For example, I took a class called Audio Mixing on the Go, Professional Sound Without the Studio by King Arthur, which gave me lots of tips for improving my mixes without lots of fancy equipment. And that's the key here. Skillshare has a large number of classes to choose from and it's all about learning. So there are no adverts and the first 1,000 of you to click the first link in the description below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare Premium. Please do go check it out and big thanks to Skillshare once again for sponsoring this video. So when objects travel along some sort of curved path or they're spinning, they have angular momentum and electrons and other particles, as it turns out, have some inherent angular momentum as well, which is what we call spin. This is all well and good. But when charged particles have some form of angular momentum, regardless of what kind we're talking about, things get really interesting. Electrons, as we know, are charged particles. They have a charge of minus 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs, roughly speaking. And when charged particles have angular momentum, they display the ability to interact with magnetic fields. These spinning charges behave like little magnets, and thus they have a property known as the magnetic dipole moment. Now, the magnetic dipole moment is essentially a vector quantity that just measures the size and direction of this little magnet created by our spinning charge. There's more to it than that, of course, but this is a really nice way of visualizing it. And when another external magnetic field is found in the region of space in which our particle happens to be, then the magnetic dipole moment of the charged particle interacts with the magnetic field. And as luck would have it, from the reference frame of an electron in our atom, in other words, when we're looking from the perspective of the electron in our atom, the electron experiences a magnetic field. 
even though if we look at an atom from a nucleus's perspective, which is what we commonly do, we assume that the nucleus is stationary at the center and electrons either orbiting or present or around, depending on what model we use. And in this scenario, there isn't a magnetic field. All we've got is an electric field created by the electric charges, both in the nucleus and surrounding it. But if we switch to the perspective of an electron in this atom, then we do see a magnetic field in this region of space. This is to do with the idea that electric and magnetic fields look different from different perspectives. It's a really interesting idea and one that I want to cover in a future video. For now though, I'll leave some resources in the description below if you want to find out more. But anyway, so an electron in an atom experiences a magnetic field. Now, as it turns out, the interaction between the external magnetic field and the magnetic dipole moment of a particular electron is proportional to the dot product between these two. This interaction, which specifically affects the energy of the electron, we'll come to that in a second, is proportional to what's also known as the scalar product between mu and b. Now, if you're unfamiliar with dot products or scalar products, what you do is you take two vectors and you multiply together their magnitudes or sizes, and then you multiply this whole thing by the cosine of the angle between them. This is what gives you the dot product between the two original vectors. And as we can see, if the two vectors are aligned, the dot product size is maximal. If the two vectors are anti-aligned, the size is once again maximal, but it's negative. And if the two vectors are perpendicular to each other, then the dot product is equal to zero. Now, doing some mathematics, which we won't be going into the details of here, we can take this interaction term, this term that describes an energy change in the energy of the electron in this particular case, and we can rewrite it in terms of these two terms. As we've already seen, L represents the angular momentum specifically related to when an electron is in a particular shell around the nucleus of the atom, and S refers to the electron spin. So what we're seeing here is contrary to our most basic models, the energy of an electron in a particular atom isn't just related to what shell it's in. It also depends on this interaction between orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. And orbital angular momentum very much has to do with what shell it's in, but the spin of an electron is the spin of the electron. Now there are lots of very intricate details that we're kind of missing out here, so if you want to find out more, again resources in the description below. But let's continue. Some of you may know that in a given electron shell around the nucleus of an atom, there are what are known as subshells. In the lowest shell, there's only one subshell. In the second shell, there are two subshells. In the third shell, there are three subshells, and so on and so forth. This is often taught in chemistry, where the subshells are labeled S, P, D, F, and so on and so forth. Importantly, the difference between subshells, even within the same shell, is the orbital angular momentum that the electron will have. Put simply, each subshell has its own L value. And this means that the value of L dot S, the dot product between the orbital angular momentum and the spin of the electron, will be different for different subshells. And hence, the energy of each particle in a given subshell will be different to the energy in other subshells. And as we've already said, different subshells can exist within the same shell. So technically, the energies of all these electrons in a particular shell need not be the same as each other. They will be different depending on which subshell they're in. These shells are split energy levels. Admittedly, the energy gaps between these split subshells are actually much smaller than the energy gaps between the shells themselves, which is why we have to look very closely in order for us to be able to actually detect these in the first place. But technically, due to the fact that the electron has spin, and this spin interacts with the orbital angular momentum, we see that what we're originally taught, that the inner shell has two electrons, and the next shell has eight electrons and they're all at the same energy level, that's not technically true. Sure, the second shell has eight electrons, but they're actually split across two energy levels. And so an energy diagram of a particular atom looks more like this than what we're used to, which is this. This splitting structure is known as the fine structure of an atom. And it turns out there's also a hyperfine structure due to other effects, but we won't cover that here. The point of this video is to show that the fact that electrons have spin has direct consequences on the real world, specifically the atoms we see around us. And the interaction between particle spin and orbital angular momentum has measurable effects on the world around us. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. Just a quick update from me, I have now released some merch. It is based on a quantum dice design. I wonder if some of you know what this is referring to, 
I want to make a video about it fairly soon, but please do check it out if you'd like to support this channel in some way. Although I do want to say here, I really do appreciate all of your kind words, all of your comments, all of your likes and so on. So thank you so much for that. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more fun physics content, hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I upload, and please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.